What's up guys? In today's replay analysis, we're going to be looking at a Punko match. And some of you may know Punko as one of the best players in Korea. He's super strong, and I thought this would be appropriate since Final Round is this weekend. Uh, in case you don't know, Final Round is the first tournament in the Capcom Pro Tour. So a lot of great international players are there this year. It's going to be really, really awesome to watch. So as always, I'm going to show the match in its entirety first. And then I'm going to uh, show it again, kind of pausing on the important parts. So if you want to skip to the analysis, go ahead and click the link below. So right off the bat, there's some pretty uh, patient neutral play from both players. There's an interesting punish from Punko. It looks like he kind of missed a, a combo there. All right, gets the throw. V trigger canceled. Punko gets nailed on his feet. Nice frame trap into the full V trigger cancel combo. Ridiculous damage. So good. He jumps back, kind of resets the situation, and a medium kick to close it out. So that was a pretty dominant round from Punko. Let's see if this Karen player can make an adjustment in round two. Alright, so the cross up didn't work, but then the instant EX dive worked. Nice DP bait. And wow, so much damage again from Punko. Ooh, a big cross up. Almost got the stun, but it looks like he might not get it. Yeah, Karen's running, running for her life. So V trigger cancel, a little combo drop there. All of a sudden, Punko's in the corner. And almost gets the stun, but a crucial combo drop. And then the combo into super, and I think this is going to close it out. So, wow, that was <laughs> so fast-paced. It's already over before I even before I even had time to take it all in. So, that was pretty ridiculous play from Punko there, closing it out. So, let's watch it again, and I'm going to kind of pause on what I think are the important moments of the match. So, again, right off the bat, I want to pause and talk about the matchup. Kami versus Karen. Where does each character kind of want to stay? What are their optimal ranges? So for Karen, I would say her optimal range is generally around her standing medium kick and crouching medium kick range. Those are two pokes that are really abusive. They're really, really good, and a lot of characters can't really deal with them. So Kami kind of has two options. She can either get all the way point blank and apply some of her offensive normals like standing medium punch or... Uh, forward and hard kick, those are good pressure tools. Or she can hang back a little bit and try to punish a whiffed poke with an EX uh, cannon strike, which is her dive kick. So she can kind of take either approach of getting right in her face or standing back a little bit. So let's see. So they're just kind of feeling each other out at first. So there was a, a pretty big drop from that Karen player, but Punko doesn't get a full punish. But instead he switches sides, puts Karen towards the corner, so that's pretty good. Alright, so this is a pretty important moment. Karen gets the standing hard kick V-trigger cancel, and it, it doesn't connect. Let me turn on input display. It doesn't connect, but this gets the Karen player the pressure so looks like Punko pressed a button and he got nailed because Karen was advantageous on block there but this is another really really important exchange so Punko gets a really good frame trap there into a combo but let's see why that happened so Karen gets the knockdown and then dashes and immediately you can tell Punko recognizes that this is not a situation where Karen can get a true meaty meaning an attack that will hit Kami as soon as she wakes up. So because of the delay of the dash and how quickly he gets up because of the quick get up, Kami can press a button on wake up and there's nothing Karen can really do about it. Anything that Karen presses at this point is going to get beaten by the jab. So he knows this and he blocks, but then he presses a jab and the frame trap after the jab from Punko comes out and nails him. And then this is going to be huge damage. So you can see right off the bat, it looks like Punko really has optimized damage for Kami. In every little situation throughout this match, you'll see whenever he gets a hit, he really makes it hurt. So I want to back it up again. This is some interesting defensive play here. 
you would kind of expect, since Punko's such an aggressive offensive player, you would expect him to kind of go nuts, try to finish the round. But instead, he just backs off, which I think is pretty interesting. It shows a lot of patience, uh, and not something you would expect from him. And then he closes it out with the medium kick, tags Karen while she's dashing on the ground. So great, great round for Punko. So let's see what happens in round two. Here you can see what I was talking about. Karen's crouching medium kick is really, really good, but the EX cannon strike is really good for beating that out. So Punko threw it out, and it just so happened that Karen was sticking out a medium kick at the same time. So that's a great bait. It looks kind of like, you know, again, you would expect this is Punko. He's going to do something crazy. He's going to mix me up. But instead, he just did a delayed jab which means that he got to block the DP. And again, he's getting completely optimized damage here. That's about as max possible damage as you can even get with Kami in that situation. So he really knows his character. So that was a great cross up and again into massive damage. He's almost got the stun here, but Karen gets the wake up throw. And now this is starting to look a little bit bad, although that was a pretty big drop from Karen. And there was an awesome footsies moment, so let's see that again. So, he's kind of standing right outside of range, and then he buffers off of the crouching medium kick. And Punko dashed into range, so the Rekkas come out. He gets him into the corner. And he's almost got him, but a big drop there. And then, this is a pretty amazing ending. So, let's back it up again. So, he drops the combo. Punko does this, the same thing that he did just a second earlier, standing jab into standing hard punch. Last time he landed it as a frame trap, but this time he lands it as a combo. And normally this combo doesn't work, but the fact that the standing jab was a counter hit, counter hits add two extra frames of hit stun and they make some links work, work that wouldn't normally. So Punko did the same setup. He checked, he saw that the jab was a counter hit. So now he knows that the Fierce is going to connect, and he can V-Trigger cancel and finish the combo. And once again, completely maximize damage. Any other combo probably wouldn't have ended it here, but he did the max possible damage and closed out the round. So, I think this match really shows off Punko's great knowledge of the character. Uh, he knows the setups, he knows the ranges, and he knows when he can get max damage. And it showed great knowledge of the game in general. You know, not going too crazy, definitely taking advantage of his offensive momentum, but then in some moments, you know, backing off a little bit, playing a more defensive game to bait stuff out. So I thought this was a really entertaining match, and hopefully we'll see more like this this weekend. So again, guys, if you weren't planning on watching Final Round, I really recommend you check it out, even if you've never watched a Street Fighter tournament before. It's going to be awesome. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, check out twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. That's where you can watch it. A lot of great players from all over the world are going to be there, so check it out. And once again, continue to send me your replays. I am watching them, all the ones that you're linking in comments and sending me in messages. So hit me with a replay. Include the replay ID and just mention who you are and uh, why you want the replay analyzed. So as always, thanks for watching, guys, and good luck out there.